third of our presentations is uh, the, the group that you saw at booth 40. It's the code.gov team. So forget what Francis just said and vote <laughs> now, right now. Now is your chance. Boo! Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's set this timer here. Yeah, so code.gov. So, oh, I can't walk away from that. So, uh, yeah, so I'm Joe Castle, uh, obviously with code.gov and GSA. And uh, I have Karen Trebon with me, who's out in the audience. Thank you, Karen, for getting me into this mess, if you will. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to talk about code.gov. And um, let's go into it. So each year, the federal government spends $6 billion on software, which is roughly about 7% of the total IT budget across government, which is roughly, it kind of moves every year, but tends to be around in the 80 billion. I think it's a little lower than that right now. So $6 billion typically results in duplicative purchasing and wasteful spending. So in August of 2016, OMB issued a memo, um, M1621, the federal source code policy, and it basically dictated three things. Uh, the first was for all CFO Act agencies to create their own source code policy. The second was to develop acquisition language that would capture uh, new custom code, whether it was developed by industry or developed by a federal employee, uh, capture that in your inventory with the possibility to open source. And then the third part of the federal source code policy was to create an inventory, um, publish that inventory, it's a metadata inventory, it's a JSON file, publish that on your agency website, and then publish at least 20% of it as open source software. So code.gov is the implementation piece of that policy. In essence, what code.gov does is it harvests JSON files from the major agencies, the 24 CFO Act agencies, aggregates that data, those JSON files, to code.gov and creates a listing by agency of all government source code. One caveat, all custom developed source code since August of 2016. So I know those folks out there that were Java developers, COBOL developers, everything else that's, that's pretty old these days, um, but still runs, even at GSA, it still runs. Um, we want the new custom developed code. We wanted to draw a line in the sand that said from this point forward, we are now going to capture code, we're going to inventory it, and potentially publish uh, at least 20% of that code. Each agency must do that. And there's exemptions, national security, other reasons. Um, but basically, let's get that code out there, right? Let's, let's, uh, let's save on some of that. So this is code.gov. Code.gov is a platform. It's an API, an application programming interface, which includes a harvester, but it also marries the, the JSON data with, um, that's harvested with GitHub data as well. So it creates a complete JSON file or complete metadata file so that uh, you can understand what you know, these source code um, repositories have. Um, it's also a website, as you can see here. So this is open to the public. Uh, you can see on the website, on the left side, you can see the uh, agencies listed. You can see their projects and their code repos. The code repos repositories, the code repos uh, can be published as open source. They can be government-wide reuse only, and then they can be exempt. So you can actually see that on the site. The ones that are open sourced will take you out to GitHub or any other open platform, sometimes an agency's website, but also sometimes um, other open coding platforms as well, where anyone could go and get the code. The code already lives there. We don't, we don't own the code. We don't like, keep the code on code.gov. It's somewhere else. We're just aggregating and pointing to that code. So it's one place where you can find all new custom developed source code. So we have quite a few features on this. Um, we have a help wanted. We actually developed this fairly recent. So if you're a citizen and you want a fun project to work on on the weekend, which believe it or not, a developer like myself actually sits around and plays with Python code on the weekends. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, but if you want a fun project and you want to do your civic duty, uh, you know, why not come and help out a government agency, right? And, and this is actually made um, possible through a pretty neat process where if you have a code repository, 
you have help, uh, basically issues within that repository, you can create a special one for help wanted. We'll pull in those issues to code.gov and post them here. So not only do you list those on GitHub or in your public repositories, you can also list them on code.gov. So it's a greater exposure uh, to get the, the word out that you could use some support. And you can see it's by language and skill level and things like that. So beginners to, to advanced uh, folks. Um, a couple examples real quick. Um, US Web Design Standards is one. Um, this basically uh, uses open source code and, let me stop that for a second. Oh, I'm out of time, but it basically uses open source code and anyone can come and gather that code and then put it into a website. So let me just show you a quick example of the GSA CTO website. That probably saved us a good 20 to 30% of three developers time for that site. Analytics.gsa.gov is another. Philadelphia, city of Philadelphia, the city of Sacramento have used that as well. And then finally, NSA has a bunch of security applications, 25 open source applications that anyone can use. Thank you. Hang tight for one second. Um, so two things, first of all, I love the hoodie and I wear a size 3X, so uh, there's that. Um, have we seen any difference in pricing in the custom software that vendors develop based on the fact that instead of it being proprietary within an agency, it's going up on a website that anybody can see? Right, that's a good question. So I wouldn't say so much pricing, but I would say we've seen more activity with agencies becoming more involved mm -hmm. in understanding what source code inventory is and then open sourcing. Um, I've also uh, seen or we've seen activity with number of code repositories used and reused. Uh, the quantification is what we're after now. So what is the cost savings? How many, you know, what are these used for? Uh, you know, how often is the code used? Those sort of things. Excellent. So Thanks very much there. for the presentation. Thank you. Congratulations and good luck. Contrary to what